Welcome to Introduction to Research Methods. This brief podcast will provide you with an overview of the systematic study of sociological research methods. It should function as a brief guide to the key landmarks as we move from ordinary explanations of ordinary social situations to more sophisticated research tools and strategies that help discern and explain structured social processes and relationships. Science and the scientific method more generally provides essential tools and strategies for knowing, understanding, and explaining the natural world. Science marks the transition to modernity. In earlier societies, people were not always able even to distinguish between the living and non-living object or things. This resulted in a kind of magical, mythical thinking in which, in quotes, the raging sea might be appeased by gifts or offering. Science calls for higher standards of objectivity and detachment. Systematic investigation, and this requires self-control, leading to and integrally tied to greater control over all things, such as control over nature or the management of human relationships. Involvement and detachment are pivotal themes in scientific inquiry. Norbert Elias, one of my favorite sociologists, refers to the fisherman in Edgar Allan Poe's Descent into the Maelstrom to describe the polarities of involvement and detachment. As human beings, we can never be entirely detached from our situation. We are always involved. But knowing this can be helpful. As recounted by Stephen Minnell, three brothers were out fishing when their boat was caught in a deep whirlpool. One brother was swept off the boat and drowned. The second clung to the boat, paralyzed with fear, very, very involved with his personal situation. The third brother was also terrified. Nonetheless, he was able to detach himself just a bit and observe what was happening around him. He noted that cylindrically shaped objects were sinking more slowly than other objects. Thus, he leapt onto a barrel and threw himself overboard, urging his brothers to do the same thing. The second brother remained paralyzed, clinging to the boat and drowned when the boat sank. The third brother survived. The whirlpool subsided before he and the barrel reached the bottom. Both brothers were very involved in their situation, but one brother was able to step back and observe regularities or patterns in what was happening around him. Writes Elias, the level of self-control and the level of process control can be seen as independent but complementary. The human level of science is much more complex in many ways. There are enormous variations in individual level of self-control. And the level of human interactions are even more difficult and more complex to discern. There's a double level of detachment and distancing involved in the social sciences. There's a need for us to see ourselves within the social context and in a set of processes which often have a goal or orientation and to assess our level and our impact. Moreover, many structured processes in the social sciences are unplanned. The natural sciences, for example, do not have to take into account voluntaristic explanations, that is, the impact of someone or some group directing events that are already part of a structured process. Finally, natural processes are generally irreversible, except through systematic, scientific, 
that is, human interventions, such as medicine. For example, in evolutionary biology, as much as some way wish that their enemies become worms or snakes, it doesn't really happen. Potential reversals in the social sciences make it much more difficult to discern an underlying structured process or set of processes. Thus, learning about sociology, and especially about social science research methods, goes beyond simply learning about sociology. It taps into what Keith Roberts calls deep structure learning, or cognitive development, learning increasingly sophisticated and refined techniques for observing and explaining structured social processes involves both emotional and cognitive developmental processes that facilitate and enable the requisite self-control and detachment. And these processes are at the core of the curriculum of sociology, actually for all solid liberal arts education. So typically students enter actually believing in absolute knowledge and have rather unexamined beliefs. They move in the process of their education from this to role-taking and interpretation to an understanding that knowledge is contextual and subjective, then to the evaluation of evidence and of opinions that are differ or differ from one another in terms of how reliable and how reputable the source. And finally, toward the end of the baccalaureate studies, students typically see that knowledge is actually probabilistic and the process of some systematic, reasonable inquiry that can be communicated to others who are also initiated into the, social, the language of social science. In this course, we will move from, from the very simple qualitative research or observations, grounded theory and coding, to the language of research or to quantitative what we used to call logico-deductive uh, methods, where we operationalize our concepts into variables, develop hypotheses that can be tested by measuring uh, via data gathering and analysis. Uh, we will execute measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion. Uh, also learn about data banks, such as the uh, General Social Survey, and compute or execute one uh, bivariate analysis, that is one two-variable analysis. This will give you a feel for the process of science, which typically always begins with the observation of something interesting and then ends with a more complex uh, quantitative data analysis. E-portfolios are an integral part of this course, and you will begin to develop yours in the second week of class. E-portfolios, at least educators believe e-portfolios, provide a venue for what we call metacognition, that is awareness of your own learning, and it provides you with a way to take control of the process, to mirror, to map, and thus to self-navigate your own way through uh, the degree matriculation process. Good luck for this semester. I'm very much looking forward to working with you.